All right, welcome to today's Q&A with Premiership winning 5'8", Jamie Soward. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, cheers for coming on the page. Got a few questions here from a few of our followers. Um, what are your career highlights? Yeah, I think playing first grade. Now, yeah, back in 2005, I didn't think I'd play one, let alone uh, over 200. So certainly mm. playing first grade, uh, winning a, a title in 2010, playing state of origin. Uh, yeah, although we didn't win the series, that's a huge honour. And uh, representing the Indigenous All-Stars four times, it was... Uh, for me, just as important, if not bigger, um, than, than some of the biggest games in my career, playing for the Indigenous side. I, I love that week and being able to represent my people. Good to see that you started your uh, career off at the best club. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually started uh, in Canberra 2003, and um, I was there with Michael Maguire, who's uh, been a very successful coach, and uh, they had Todd Carney in the halves, so I decided to move on and I uh, went up to the Roosters in, in 2004 and pretty much had a dream run that year. We didn't lose the game. We were scoring plenty of points, so that was a nice transition to move up here. And, um, yeah, I, I, everyone thinks I started at the Roosters, but I actually started at Canberra. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, but I was pretty lucky to come to the Roosters. It's a good club. <laughs> Who's the best player you've ever played with in your career? Um... It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I've played in, in rep teams. Um, mm. Yeah, I played with GI, played with uh, Jono, which was, yeah, if you're talking one off games, um, you know, that first week in 09, rooming with Jonathan Thurston ahead of the first All Stars game was was pretty special uh, to be able to pick his brain and, and, you know, talk footy with him, but also understand. Yeah, he, he, how great he actually was, uh, yeah. on and off the field. So, uh, but if you're talking longevity, um, yeah, over, over 10, 20, 30 games, uh, I've always been a, a massive Brett Morris fan. I think it, he's, yeah, probably the best winger, um, of all time in my eyes. They score over 150 tries. Yeah, 50 tries in two years, 09, 10. And, um, yeah, I always just was really in awe of the, some of the stuff that he did. Um, especially at the Dragons uh, throughout those years, and then yeah, you know, the way he played in the grand final last year, it's uh, yeah, Brett Morris would be certainly up there. It's it's good to see that he's back with his brother at the Roosters. Yeah, it's uh, they, they they love each other. They've all meant to to finish playing alongside each other. So hopefully, for their sake, they can. Uh, you know, Brett's got two. I think uh, Josh would be happy with one if he could get one at the Roosters. Yeah. What's your favourite ground to play at and why? Um, I think Cogra, you know, always holds a special memory and place in my heart. Um, you know, those, those years we were successful at the Dragons, 09, 10, 11, you know, the house was rocking, it was full. Uh, you could, you know, it took you forever to get in, forever to get out because it was that packed. So I love playing at Cogra on a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon. Um, it was usually, yeah, pretty packed out in there on the hill, and, and those fans are, are right on top of you, so I enjoy playing the Cogra. Yeah, nice. Uh, how did the NRL compare to the Super League with your time over in London with the Broncos? The Super League's great. I think that, you know, they, the style of rugby league is completely different over there. It's a lot more open, um, you know, a lot more points. They just haven't got the depth across all 12 teams. You know, we've got teams that struggle here from year to year, but our depth within the NRL is, is far superior, which, which everyone knows. So uh, I think the styles are completely different, but I enjoyed my time over there. Um, you know, whether it was successful or not, it was what happened in life. And, you know, my, I cut my teeth in the NRL. So I always see that as a bit of a badge of honor, but you know, I love watching the Super League. I love watching the Aussies go over there and carve up and, I enjoy their, their style of footy, but uh, the NRL is, is the best one. Who was the best coach you had, whether NRL, Super League or representative? Yeah, well, obviously Wayne you know, seemed to get the best out of me. So uh, through 09, 10, 11, he was um, yeah, pretty instrumental in getting my form to where it was. And you know, I was uh, enjoying playing under Wayne. He just knew what to say, when to say it, how to say it, to be able to get the best out of players. And that's why players for you know, over 20 years have loved playing for Wayne. And uh, he's a great guy to have around. And you know, he's, uh, that's why he's been successful. Yeah. Uh, how did your goal kicking routine start? And when did you start doing it? 
Uh, I wasn't a great goal kicker coming up from Wagga. Um, I just sort of worked out a little bit. But Graham Arnold, who's a Socceroos coach, uh, we did a session at Cogra one day and he just brought some things to my attention. And I don't know where the march came about. It just sort of happened. But, um, you know, working with Graham and being able to understand some of the, the things that I needed to do to improve my goal kicking is, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool story to think that he's a Socceroos coach now and that I had Graham Arnold at Cogra by myself uh, teaching me how to goal kick and I wasn't a, a fantastic kicker but I was uh, lucky enough to be able to steer a few through the post. So I remember growing up I'd, I'd be in the backyard, your routine, <laughs> over and over. <laughs> We've got a question from one of our followers. In the 2014 semi-final when you were playing for the Panthers and you kicked the field goal to win it, how'd you settle your nerves and just be able to slot it like that in front of a big crowd and a final slot on the line? Field goals are, are practiced, but they're probably not a planned. I prided myself on planning for field goals, which is why I kicked probably so many that I, I really relished the fact that the ball was going to come to me to win the game or tie the game. And, uh, you yeah, know, more often than not, it was about the planning. So that semi-final, you know, the, everyone thinks that the field goal was the big play, and yes, it was. But the, the bigger play was the um, goal kick. Yeah, you know, three minutes earlier when Dallin scores. Uh, sorry, Dean Barre scores, and then I kicked the goal from the sideline. That was I was more nervous for that than the field goal because if we miss that, we're still chasing two points. But um, I was riding emotion from kicking that goal and. Yeah, Moise was sort of setting up to have a crack and uh, always just worked that right post. So um, I don't really, didn't really get nervous with field goals because it was in, you know, I probably got more nervous for goal kicking, but yeah. Um, I just, yeah, just leaned back and, and slotted it. It wasn't the prettiest one, but a little line drive just snuck over. As long as it gets over, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's right. Steering away from the NRL, I, I see you're a Wanderer supporter. Yeah, I'm, uh, so I go for the Wanderers. We went to the Wanderers with my wife about four years ago, five years ago, when it was at the old Wonderland, and um, had a great experience there. Um, associated with the Kings, been doing some work with them the last couple of years. Yeah, uh, been uh, Boston, huge Boston Celtics fan, Boston Red Sox. So I love my sport, and I'm lucky enough for my wife uh, loves sport as well. So mm. big, uh, big basketball fans in this house. But yeah, we love we love going to the Wanderers as well. Who's your favourite Wanderers player? current and of all time? Uh, Bridgie was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got on the piss with him one night. Um, Vuka was there uh, hanging around Sydney as well. So um, I went to a couple of games thanks to Bridgie. But um, yeah, Dookie for me at the moment is one of those guys that's just infectious to hang around. And I um, mm. met him at the couple of games I was able to attend this year. And he's just such a nice guy to be able to chill and talk to. And uh, I kept giving him shit because he wasn't didn't get a goal while I was there, but um, no, he's he's probably my favourite. Um, you know, County Bacchus, the young guy, cutting yep. his teeth in, in the A-League. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, get a signed pair of boots from him and um, nice. just uh, talk to him as a young guy coming through. And the thing we probably don't realise is how uh, much those guys you know, love other sporting people as well so mm. uh, it's cool to cool to meet Mitch and, and obviously Keanu and you know the Wanderers uh, do things really really well there it's just a, a matter of trying to get it all on the field at the same time and get that success yeah I, I like Mo Adam he's showing he's showing a lot yeah it, it's tough because the A-League season goes for so long so um, mm. once the basketball rolls around you're sort of trying to pay attention I've got a little one year old so it's um yeah, you know, try and get to as many games and get across as many things as I can. But sometimes it's nice just to refresh and, and mm. you know, press, press the off button. So our our final question: Who do you think will win the twenty twenty premiership this year? Yeah, it's uh, look, things have changed. Um, you know, Melbourne Roosters, uh, Para, Canberra. I think will all be there. Yeah, you know, there or thereabouts at, at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Manly. I think that they've got a, a really good chance to be able to come out of this break with uh, Daly Cherry Evans, you know, Tom Chaboyevich, is some of the best players in the competition. So I think it comes down to those five, uh, possibly the Broncos. It'll be interesting to see how they bounce, you know, keep this young uh, pack rolling. So there's so many different storylines to come out. I don't think 
anyone would be able to pick a real winner mm. until the first month of the comp- competition was starting. But now, uh, for you being a Roosters fan, it's uh, the break came at the right time. Uh, I know yeah. it's, you know, two games isn't surmountable, isn't in, isn't insurmountable. So they should be able to get themselves into a position to go for a three peat. Let, let's hope so. Not not going to say you uh, love the dragons. Nah. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us today, Sowie. No worries, mate. Good luck with the podcasting. Keep it up, and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you later. Cheers. Thanks, bro.